My happiest moments were getting a, a new box of crayons when I was a kid. I totally remember going to the grocery store and when it would happen. They had a certain smell and look to them and I used to ridiculously take care of them, my crayons, and I used to sharpen them and I used to save the shavings in these little like jewelry boxes because like the entire life of the crayon created something just so beautiful for me, either coloring with them or shaving them and then seeing, I know this sounds totally weird, but um, <laughs> seeing like the, the curls of the wax, the colored wax and how they would crumble into this really gorgeous colorful confetti. My name is Mishu Sanchez, and I am an artist, an architect, and a designer. Um, I was born in Tampa, Florida. My mother is from San Jose, Costa Rica. My father is American, but I was raised by my mom and my grandparents. So I was raised in a very Latin household to a very hardworking single mom. Um, much to the disappointment of my mom, I went into design and art, and then subsequently into architecture, which are my two true loves in life. But they're both the same to me. They're both a unique way of expressing the way you see the world or solutions to things. And what's really cool is you get people, you, you do these abstract paintings, right? That could include the splash and the circle and the squiggly. And you'll have people who want to talk to you about it and they're like, I see a, a cow having tea, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, awesome. It's not so much my way, is that I, I really try to, to leave an open end to things. So that the, the story ending is written by the viewer, or the person that's experiencing the work. Like, the, the images can sometimes be vague, but it asks a question. I'm not giving them the answer. generous person. As a human being, she's gifted and she has a kind of quiet charisma that I think translates well into her art, which I find provocative and beautiful and interesting and suffice to say that she is brilliant and talented and there's a lot about her that I find very complex and yet accessible at the same time and I think that translates into her art. I think her art is beautiful and I think it speaks for itself. I studied engineering 
um, as an engineering major and I was so bored like I love math math is my thing I love math and um, I was studying engineering at USF and um, I was bored like not that I'm saying that engineers are you know but I guess I got to the point where I realized I can't imagine the rest of my life doing this and then I prayed I know a lot of people aren't very religious but I asked God to show me what I needed to do to find contentment. At that moment I knew and I had complete and utter peace that what I needed to do was to go study art and design. So I did it with no regret. One of Misha's best qualities, one of the things I think I admire about her the most is her humility. Like she's like uber talented, can do anything that she wants. I mean she's an architect, she paints like God but she handles it all with such grace and humility. What is the definition of American, I think has changed so profoundly. Like, it's not just blonde hair, blue-eyed people anymore. It's people from all over the world. We are all Americans now, and it's almost as if we can define from all the different components of the new family. It's basically, and it's not even have to be anything manufactured, it's what we actually are. There's Haitians and Cubans and Chinese and Japanese and hold on a second. I think we need to look back at the things that our four founding forefathers wrote. What this country was based on and remind ourselves what it is to be American. That they were all from somewhere else. They weren't born here. Along with the creating the series I'm asking myself questions that I'd never asked before. The Declaration of Independence, or the Bill of Rights, or um, freedom of speech, and right, right to bear arms, and all the foundation of what it is to be. I find it fascinating to be asking these questions and asking other people these questions. And I don't know about them, but I haven't asked myself these questions before and I don't expect anything except maybe having somebody for half a second think about it to appreciate what it is that we have here that's so beautiful that so many people have fought for and died for died died for something that they believed in to make sure that other people could have it like that's pretty beautiful you know It's important to um, enjoy life. I think it's important to laugh and appreciate your friends and be grateful for things and to find contentment and appreciative and share. And I think it's also important to help people. I do. You know? My life hasn't been perfect, but you know what? God has been very generous with me. And because of that, it is my responsibility to give back to the world. But yeah, I think that when one has plenty or many gifts, God rewards you for sharing and giving. You know, everything she does either on a canvas or as a person. It all comes from this incredibly genuine place. Everything she does, she has a passion for. Whether it's putting her thoughts down on a canvas or on a piece of wood or whatever she finds, or whether right. she's cooking or she's helping you out or anything she does, it all comes from this very real, human, genuine place. When I've worked with her as a model, we've talked about a concept um, and she just says, okay, let's do it. And in 30 minutes, we're done. So ideas, yeah. constant ideas pop in your head. You're always thinking about it, like being an obsessed person in love. Because let's face it, being in love is a form of mania. And so is art. And so, um... <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so you have all these ideas and then you start formulating them. And part of my process is to um, visualize them. So I take from media or the internet or images or photo or images that I photograph. Um, it just depends on what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and then, for example, in this RNC series, you know, I got these army men at the dollar store and then I started playing with configurations and then I started photographing them. You photograph them, you bring them to Photoshop, you create a composition having your your art history and education basis in and you create a composition. And then um, manipulate it in Photoshop and then um, project it onto the canvas. Where I then sketch it, a loose sketch usually, and then it's painting, painting, painting. And then it keeps changing. The shapes change, um, but the concept's still there. I wake up and I lay there and I think about all the things that I would like to do. And usually the list is pretty huge. Like, there isn't enough time during a day to do everything that I would love to do. It's always different. Like, there's always coffee, there's always cigarettes, there's always paint in some capacity. <laughs> I usually have paint all over me. I, I never have really nice hands because they're always full of something. And my dogs, shit. We lay there, and I'm like, good morning, Lucy, good morning, Jack, and like, I love them, so, you know, that's my day, basically. She's always got chalk with her, and she just takes it and, you know, talks people into doing art on the sidewalk. It, it's, it's there for as long as people see it. Rain comes, washes it away, it's not permanent, it's not destructive, and it's just a way for people to create them create and express themselves, and that's what's important to me, too. You know, the life of an artist is not an easy one, and in, and in the beginning it's not very financially stable, but you continue on because you love what you do. So the way that the paint came about was that things were really, really thin for a while, and paint is really expensive. So I had a, I had a show, and a friend of mine had a friend, a friend who, um, was one of the directors at a recycling facility and you can't legally throw away gallons of paint or spray cans of spray paint. Um, you, they have to be empty if you're going to dispose of them or you have to take, it, take them to a, a facility that processes them because you don't want to have all that stuff leak into the environment. So um, he looked at me and he said, uh, his name is Herman, would you like to have paint? Like, a never-ending supply of it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, dream, I cried, I totally cried. Like, tears are streaming down my face. And he's like, don't cry, don't cry. It, it, it comes in, you know, it comes in every, every day, every week. You can just come in and pick the colors that you want and stuff and Sorry, I'm gonna cry. You made me fucking cry. But, um, it was just beautiful because sometimes, like, the struggle is so difficult and tough. And it's not really financially sound, but you do it because you love it. And then to have someone give you something in order to continue doing it. Je n'ai pas de vue sur la mer, mais une très belle vue sur la ville. Les phares clignotent, me font du morse, je cligne des yeux pour seul riposte. Plus haut dans le ciel, les étoiles servent dans les cocktails des phrases toutes faites. Aux jolies femmes, robes et paillettes qui ne jurent que par les billets verts. Je suis d'une ville où la nuit règne et les rues craignent et les cœurs saignent. 
et la police veillent sous la lumière et dans la haine. Mais j'y suis. Plus de chemise pour me moucher, juste ma peau pour m'essuyer. Et je la porte comme un fardeau, elle se fout bien du lendemain. Le jour se lève sur ma fenêtre.